All right, well, hey, everybody. My name is Joshua Larocque, and today I wanted to try to explain to you uh, some of the more basic concepts around uh, creating the illusion of form. So this is how do we create uh, the illusion of three dimensions in uh, a two-dimensional format? Uh, so we're going to draw a sphere, all right? This is the, this is the basic conceptual model behind um, everything I'm thinking about when I'm drawing or painting, and, and I find that you know, it's one of the more um, eye-opening concepts for students when I when I first introduce it to them uh, in a workshop or um, you know in a school format. So think about it this way: when we're drawing a sphere, the the circumference of the sphere is a perfect circle. Okay, um, so I'm just kind of laying that out. Now, let's imagine that we were to light this sphere in a certain environment, and the light was coming in from you know say this direction. Imagine this is sort of like a can light something like that. So the light's coming in more or less, more or less like this, okay? We can think about how half of the sphere then is in light, half of the sphere is in shadow. So if I were to imagine now that sort of uh, what we could call the terminator line or the form shadow on this sphere, so I'm imagining that past this point on the sphere, right, this is all in shadow, and this is all in light. So 180 degrees of the sphere is in light, 180 degrees of the sphere is in shadow. And then I can imagine this, the form shadow, passing back behind the sphere if I can't, you know, we can't see this, but I'm imagining it continues back behind something like this. Um, okay. Now let's imagine that this sphere is uh, sitting on sort of a flat surface, a table or something. So then there would be a, a cast shadow, a corresponding cast shadow. It's the, it's the shape of the sphere then being sort of draped over the flat surface of the table. So I'm imagining sort of this line kind of comes in something like this, right? It's tangent to the edge of the sphere and then creates some sort of arc down in this direction and then we can imagine something similar on the other side, right? So this is, you know, this is not a perfect diagram, but it gets the ideas across. All right, so then, our first question really to ask ourselves is what plane on this sphere is most perpendicular to our imagined light source? And we call that uh, a number of different things, but for our purposes we'll call that form light, right? So um, when you see values in reality, a, a, they are basically, they're governed by two basic concepts. Uh, one is form light, one is highlight. Form light has to do with how perpendicular a plane is relative to the direction of a light source. So the more perpendicular a plane is to this light source, then the brighter that, that plane is in value. And then as these planes tip away from the light source, then they're getting progressively darker uh, until uh, they tip so far away from the light that the light can no longer see them, and so that's what we get, uh, uh, that's when we get a shadow. And that's the, very simply, the gradation that we're going to uh, create. So this, uh, this plane, which I'm calling the, the plane most perpendicular to the light, this is gonna be left the tone of my page, and then I'm going to flatten my shadow so I can just you know, make some hatch marks around here. takes a minute to kind of flatten the shadow. But then what we're going to do is start hatching out of this form shadow progressively, but I'm imagining the arc of the gradation aiming at this plane, okay? So it's just getting this plane right here is a little bit darker than this plane right here, and then it just gets lighter and lighter progressively as we make it all the way up uh, to that most perpendicular plane. So I'm going to go ahead and sort of set about uh, laying this in a little bit, flattening my shadow and making a little bit more of the gradation. And then we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about uh, the highlight. Okay, so that's, this, that's the second phenomenon of light. Anytime light is interacting with a piece of form or an object, um, there's, there's form light and highlight. So, so we'll come back and talk about that.
All right, so I'm just continuing to flatten my shadow here. Sometimes it's nice to just kind of pick out a few of the little sort of darker specks that, that are eventually sort of um, made through the, the, the cross-hatching. But for the purposes of the illusion, it's very important for the, the shadow to be, to be flat. Um, a number one sort of mistake I find that, that, that people make is they put too much information in the shadows right off. So, you know, when you're looking at a, a say you're drawing a portrait from life, um, there's a lot of reflected light that's bouncing around in the shadows on the chin or the nose or the eyes or something like that. But when setting up the illusion, it's really best to kind of just ignore that from the beginning. And then we can address it later on once the, once the, uh, once the illusion is taking shape. All right. So I'm flattening my shadow, and I'm just going to now continue to start making my way out of the Terminator. So they're just a series of hatches. And I'm making my, my hatch marks perpendicular to the way that the gradation is going. So in other words, the gradation is going from dark to light in this direction, dark to light like that, all the way around. right? Still, everything's aiming for that most per perpendicular plane. But I'm making my hatch marks perpendicular to, to that idea. And that's so that I can vary the value, right? If I make my hatch marks in this direction, then essentially I'm making this plane and this plane the same value. And that's not what I want. I want this plane to be slightly darker than this plane, and that one slightly darker than this plane, and so on. Okay. Now, as I continue to darken, though, um, the parts of the form on this, on this conceptual sphere that are very near the shadow, um, but that are not actually in the shadow, are very, very close in value to what I've set for the shadow. Um, and the trick is to bring that local contrast together uh, without losing the terminator line, without losing that graphic shape of light versus shadow. So I have to be a little bit more conscientious about the marks that I'm making in order to do that. So I spend some time filling in a few of the little specks of the page, and then I come back in also and pull out some of those, some of those dots. But this is just, you know, this is how to deal with the medium. I'm using graphite on a tone page. Um, you know, but it would be the same if it was in paint. The, the same basic concepts would be the same if it was paint or charcoal or whatever. One thing to consider is that the gradation from the shadow to the plane most perpendicular to the light is not constant. So in other words, it's it gets darker uh, more quickly the closer it gets to the terminator, right? So there's a very quick, there's a very rapid change in value here in this sort of uh, arc of the form. And then it broadens out and it gets, gets lighter more slowly as it approaches um, the most perpendicular plane. Kind of just laying a basic, basic value in here. Um, just getting something down, and then we can refine it. The trick when thinking about form light, too, is, is at some point, I want to think, stop thinking about this in terms of values and see it as a sculpture. So I'm trying to trick my brain into seeing this as actually round, as if I'm peering beyond the picture plane. and, and touching an actual sphere so that my, you know, the pencil is sort of like a carving uh, instrument or a chisel. And I'm, I'm tipping these planes away from our imagined light source, OK? So that's what I'm going for. And I, I understand conceptually how to set up the gradation. But really, I'm, I'm looking for this, this tactile experience as I'm going, going about it. because. If I can trick myself into thinking that this is a round sphere, then, then my viewer is also going to be tricked uh, in the illusion. So. You notice I really haven't touched anything at all uh, up here 
uh, on those most perpendicular planes. And I'll just kind of erase some of those diagram marks for, for the moment. It's, it's starting to kind of take on that illusion for me. Kind of clean up some of the edges around the contour here. And I'm also imagining that it's getting slightly darker as, it, as the form turns away from the light, but on the other side of the contour that, um, that I can't see. But I have to imagine that there's that other side, right? So it's, it's darkening slightly, just, just barely right there near the edge uh, on, the, on the top left quadrant. Now let's consider the highlight. Now the highlight is generally, if it's a shiny object, the highlight is generally the, the, the brightest value that we see. But it's caused by a, a different interaction of light with the form. So when we're talking about form light and the perpendicularity of planes, that has to do with light being absorbed by the object and then being re-emitted in a diffuse way. Highlight has to do with the fact that light kind of ricochets off the surface at certain angles and into our eye. So, where form light is dependent only on the relationship of the object to the light source, high light is dependent on my relationship to the object uh, and the light source as well. So, so let me try to kind of diagram it out like this. Let's imagine that this is the, the top view of our sphere. Okay, so we're looking down on it now. Let's imagine that the, that the light is coming in from this direction, something like that. So then here would be our terminator, right? And then this would be the plane that's most perpendicular to the light right here, OK? So this is all in shadow. All right, now, if I were to, say, view the sphere from, say, this position in the room relative to the light source, I would perceive the highlight maybe somewhere, somewhere just to the right of the plane that's most perpendicular to the light. Because it's going to, we're imagining the light like a little piece of, pho, little photon, a little ball. It's going to come in, bounce off the surface at that same angle, and then right into my eye. But now let's say I move in this direction in the room relative to the object. Let's say I'm viewing, viewing the sphere now from this point. Then the highlight is going to move around with me, and I might perceive it somewhere like here on the form. So it's going to kind of imagine this little photon coming in, striking the form, bouncing off at that same angle, and then right into my eye. OK, so that's kind of what we're thinking about, two different and distinct phenomena with light. Um, so in this case, if this is the plane that's most facing the light on our sphere, then the highlight is going to be somewhere, say, like right here. Because I'm below and to the right of my imagined light source, the highlight is also below and to the right of my plane most facing the light. All right. But this, again, this, what's really important here is this doesn't interrupt that gradation that we were setting up a second ago, right? So the main value changes from dark to light aiming at that plane. The highlight just sits over the top of that. And it'll do that more or less depending on how shiny the object is. Um, if this were, say, like a cue ball, right, like a billiard ball, then it's very shiny. Then you get a really, really strong and distinct highlight. But if it was, um, you know, say a tennis ball or something like that, well, the surface is broken up enough that you're not going to see really any highlight at all. Um, but so we just, we, we need to understand the, diff the two different things that are, that are happening. Um, the other sort of main uh, mistake I see is that people see the highlight. They, they say that, okay, well, that's the brightest thing I see. And then they make all of the gradations on their form go and peek at that highlight. They aim, they're aiming there, but they shouldn't be aiming here. They need to be aiming there, all right? So you can, you can use this concept uh, on, on anything and everything. And it's just it's so clarifying, I think, um, to, uh, to be able to separate those two things out uh, in your head. And, and you know, be observant. Think. Go and just look at random everyday objects and try to, try to differentiate these two things. Try to think about uh, what's highlight and what's form light, and um, uh, which plane is most perpendicular to the light on this given form. Uh, and then sketch. You know, I mean, this is, this is practice. It took, 
me a long time to really understand uh, these ideas. You know, I would come in uh, and my, my teachers would, would explain it again and again and, you know, it took a while for it to finally, to finally stick. And then, you know, another bit to actually be able to kind of uh, manipulate the medium in order to create that illusion. But um, uh, I think you're going to find that this concept uh, is extremely helpful. So um, I'm going to keep going along here, but I really hope that this helped you guys out. Um, shoot us an email at info at eastoakstudio.com. Uh, let us know what you're thinking. If you have some questions, we'd be happy to make more of these videos so that we can, um, we can, we, we can help you out however we can. Um, so with that, I think I'll, I'll say goodbye and um, see you next time.